All right, let's move on. Charles Blanding, come right up, Charles, and give us your presentation, how radio was killed in the 1940s and 50s by television, the evil eye. Charles Blanding. Okay. Okay, everybody hear me okay? Very good, okay. We uh, got a little feedback here. Somebody's gonna have to ride gain a little bit on that. Turn it down just a hair. I, I think I'm okay. I've turned off the projector because pictures are the enemy tonight. Pictures are what almost destroyed our precious radio. So we're gonna, we're gonna leave the projector down. As of December 1948, there were six TV channels on the air in New York, and a seventh was under construction. It would launch in 1949. By the end of 1952, when the FCC's infamous TV freeze was lifted, and new TV stations sprang up everywhere, large radio stations, and especially the main networks in New York, were in deep trouble. Television sets had achieved living room dominance and radios were tossed aside when it came time to evening primetime entertainment. In the decade from 1946 through 1956, the family primetime network radio audience fell by 90%, from 25 million to 2.56 million. That was the good news. <laughs> Vital advertising dollars were being diverted in droves to the new TV medium, where people could now see the advertised product and not just hear about it. While the radio networks soldiered on, airing their popular evening shows on both TV and radio, it was soon apparent that this had no future at all. The TV sound was made to accompany visual content, and the radio audience was scratching their heads wondering what all the laughter from the sight gags was about. Delayed feeds with voiceovers for the radio content were too difficult and expensive to keep up, with so little money coming in from the radio side. What are we going to do with all these powerful radio channels and sprawling networks that cost a fortune to maintain? Smaller non-network radio stations had found a solution to the problem over a decade ago. They had already begun to reinvent radio. DJs Al Jarvis in L.A. and Martin Block in both New York and L.A. had created shows based on playing records injecting personality, and having news and weather updates at regular intervals. A man named Todd Storrs in the Midwest even invented a format called Top 40, where only 40 or so of the most popular records from the Top 100 were played. This was a kind of radio that did not need the listener's full attention. It could be played while working, eating, driving, and with portable radios even in parks and at the beach. Well, this was a viable opportunity, alternative for independent radio stations was not the answer for network radio. Network radio would have to reinvent itself as well. The end solution was for the networks to provide national news at the top and bottom of the hour for affiliate stations and have all the stations revert to local programming in between. Special feature shows like The Breakfast Club and Arthur Art Link Letter were sent over the network during the day, and as needed, network coverage of election returns, presidential speeches, and sports help local affiliates provide comprehensive radio service. The DJ and popular music and news format would rule, in most cases, for the remainder of the time. NBC provided personality DJ shows over the weekend as a service called Monitor. This allowed affiliate stations in small cities to have big name talent on the air for part of their weekly schedules and to give some of their local announcers the weekend off as well. By 1954, only a small handful of classic radio network radio dramas and variety shows remained on the air. It seemed like the problems had all been worked out. But were they really? No way. In the summer of 1954, my mom, my sister, and I, along with some neighbors, donned our swimwear and began the long walk to the private swim club we belonged to. It was nearly a mile. The woman across the street, I'll call her Mrs. I for short, carried a portable radio with her. Bless her heart, it was an Emerson suitcase wooden portable with an AB battery, weighed a ton. She hauled that thing a mile each way along with her swimmer. She was a trooper. When we arrived and spread out our towels and blankets, she turned on the radio. It was tuned to WABC. 
Perry Como was singing Wanted. People all around the radio requested she switch to various other stations. WMGM, WMCA, WINS, and WNEW were all requested. Mrs. I shrugged and refused to change the station. She said, what's the difference? They're all playing the same records. I suddenly realized that she was right. Every station on the dial that played popular music sounded about the same at that time. Here's the top five songs from the summer of 1954, just to give you an idea of the state of where we were. At number five this week, we have Perry Como and Wanted. Someone who kissed me and held me closely, then stole my heart. Wanted someone I trusted, who gave no warning we'd ever part. She was last seen. The number four position this week belongs to Frank Ware. And the happy wanderer. I love to go a wandering along the mountain track. And as I go, I love to see my knapsack on my back. Marie, Marie, Moving up at number three is Archie Blyer, Hernando's Hideaway, from the musical Pajama Game. I know a dark, secluded place, a place where no one knows your face, a glass of wine, a fast embrace. It's called Hernando's Hideaway, Ole. All you see are silhouettes and all. You hear our casting nets. Number two, it's the four aces. Three coins and a fountain. Make it mine. Make it mine. Please make it mine. Three coins in the fountain. Each one seeking happiness Thrown by three hopeful lovers Which one will the fountain bless? And at number one, it's Kitty Callan, Little Things Mean a Lot from across the room Say I look nice when I'm not Touch my hair As you pass my chair Little things Mean a lot Give me your arm Okay, everybody wake up You get the idea <laughs> You get the idea Almost not worked out In New York radio yet with so many stations doing exactly the same thing, and strictly adult music overall, no one under 30 would have any use for a radio with that stuff. A uh, few individual stations were doing very well, especially the large network ones. A fatal flaw in the network plan was that they failed to consider the required local news. The network news that they carried twice an hour was national only. They needed to follow it with local news as well, since they were licensed to serve New York City. Strapped with 10 minutes of news twice an hour, it was impossible for network O&Os to be competitive in the music arena. Independent stations could fit in three or four more songs every hour. New York radio limped along, waiting either to die quietly or have some miracle come along and save the day. 
That miracle turned out to be rock and roll. In October of 1954, WINS brought in Alan Freed from Cleveland and put his big beat rock and roll show on at night. This music was nearly all R&B from so-called race records, but it still got a huge following from the young white audience. Starting in 1955, a few rock and roll type songs from all music genres were popping up on the charts and getting noticed. In the spring of 1956, Elvis's Heartbreak Hotel was the first in a seemingly endless string of hits that caused the entire form of radio to change. Suddenly, station owners had to make big decisions and make them quickly. In 1956, WMGM, WMCA, and WINS all started playing rock and roll songs, along with the pop ones. These stations also started to play R&B and country songs from the mainstream charts as well. Now we're going to talk a little bit about those charts. I have some here. We're going to start with WMGM. For those who don't know, that's the one that's on 1050. It became WHN later, and it was WHN to start with. But As of January 16th, 1956, I have their top 10 here with... Dean Martin's memories are made with this, number one, and 16 Tons is number two. Not a single rock and roll song on here. Nelson Riddles and this Lisbon Antigua, <laughs> Frank Sinatra, Love and Marriage, no rock and roll. A month later, February 26, 1956, Bill Haley and the Comets, See You Later Alligator, was on at number five. Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers, Why the Fools Fall in Love, was on there. Unfortunately, <laughs> these were mixed with Dick Hyman's Morite, Les Baxter's The Poor People of Paris, Nelson Riddle's Lisbon Antigua. It was mixed with the pop. We get up to September 24th, 1956. Elvis's Don't Be Cruel, You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog, and Honky Tonk Part Two by Bill Doggett were all in the top ten on WMGM. Unfortunately, so was Eddie Haywood's Soft Summer Breeze, Jerry Vale's You Don't Know Me, <laughs> Doris Day, Whatever Will Be Will Be, and Hugo Winterholder's Canadian Sunset. <laughs> Imagine those played side by side, but that's what they were doing. But at least those, this station, at least WMGM was playing the rock and roll, not avoiding it. WMCA survey for the week of September 13th, 1957. I have a top 20 here. There's about nine rock and roll songs on here. It's starting to progress. That'll be the day by the Crickets. Hula Love by Buddy Knox. A whole lot of shaking going on. Jerry Lee Lewis. Diana, Diana by Paul Hanka. Honeycomb, Jimmy Rogers. Mr. Lee, the Bobettes. A lot of love in Gene Vincent. Alone by the Shepherd Sisters. Uh, Around the World by Monovani. <laughs> <laughs> Fascination by Jane Morgan. These are all mixed. Are they fair to remember, Vic Damone? Uh, these are all mixed with the rock songs. But it still served its purpose. Network and corporate owned stations, WNBC, which by the way, at that time, was called WRCA. I don't know how many remember that, but 66 was WRCA. WCBS and WNEW avoided rock and roll, R&B, and country like the plague, and played only pop selections, and worse, watered down pop cover versions of those other songs. Gale Storms, I Hear You Mocking, comes to mind. <laughs> WABC did the same on a full-time basis. However, Saturday morning, from 10 until 2, Martin Block did a cash box chart countdown that was totally uncensored rock and roll, R&B, and country-wise. Whatever was on the chart, he played without mercy on both AM and FM at that time, which was astounding. You did have Monovani next to You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog, but still he played You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog. Once rock and roll got on the radio, the youth finally had a reason to listen, and the audience fragmented itself among stations. Kids and adults went to different places to hear the music they wanted. The few stations that played rock and roll were suddenly popular and profitable. There was good reason for that profit. It's called the post-war baby boom. 
by 1960, American teenagers would have $10 billion a year to spend. That massive advertising windfall would continue to grow throughout the 60s. Radio listening habits were changing for everyone as well. By the late 1950s, small, cheap transistor radios burst on the scene. Just about every youth rarely went anywhere without his or her radio. These radios all came with earphones as well. Kids were listening in bed, in school, and just about anywhere else they weren't supposed to. Adult listening patterns changed as well. Housewives listened to matinee idol type announcers on their kitchen radios as they played adult pop music all day. William B. Williams comes to mind. <laughs> WNEW. Okay, dads had portables with them and they did household and yard chores as well. Car radios were virtually never turned off. They were set to a favorite station and went on and off with the ignition key. Nearly every store you went into had a radio playing behind the counter or through ceiling speakers. Radio may have been bumped from the living room, but it was virtually everywhere now. And TV could not begin to compete with that kind of market penetration. In the fall of 1957, there was finally enough rock and roll songs on the charts for WINS to claim to be an all rock and roll station. Up-tempo rock songs were emphasized and the presentation changed as well to generate more excitement. This took the market by storm and they were soon number one with a 20-something market share. Now, WOR and WNEW had like 10s and 12s then. ABC, NBC, and CBS had fives if they were lucky. To have that 20 was amazing. It just showed that there was a market for this. And it, but everybody else wanted on the bandwagon pretty soon. In April of 1958, WMCA went all rock and roll as well. They brought in people that had worked in the stores operation in the Midwest, and they had invented the top 40 format, and they went up against WINS. A month later, WMGM also claimed to be all rock and roll. This was not altogether the case, though. They were the first New York station to be what is referred to as day parted. The morning show featured Ted Brown and his wife, the Redhead, playing mostly pop selections. And the midday show, Jerry Marshall's record rack, was more of the same. From 2 p.m. on, the station rocked fully, with Peter Tripp counting down the hits of the week from 5 to 8 p.m. daily. But WMGM was filled with ball games and interruptions, especially on the weekends. Here are some examples of how these stations sounded in the first days of rock and roll. Now, I have to warn you, these stations all had a very middle-of-the-road presentation as rock and roll goes. Some of these legendary announcers we're about to hear <laughs> may not quite be as good as special as you remember. We're going to hear Peter Tripp on WMGM first. We're going to hear uh, Joe O'Brien and Benny on WMCA. I've got uh, a Smith named Irv and Jack Lacey complete with his theme on WINS. And we're going to hear Martin Block eventually on WABC. We're going to start with WMGM. This is the top 25 countdown. This is New Year's Eve, 1958. And uh, he's winding up the countdown for the night. Peter Tripp called himself the curly-headed kid in the third row. He was on WMGM. Here he is. People, according to all facts and figures, this is one of the most listened to shows around the country. And according to all facts and figures, this is the most listened to, the most popular, the most everything record of the year. Well, good people, that was the number one song, Mr. Prez, Prado, and Patricia. You know, as I said, that was number one, according to all the facts and figures. I said that for a purpose, because there are some times when facts and figures don't tell all of the story. Now this year, for example, there has been a hit record that uh, has been of such short duration of time that it really hasn't had a chance to show even in the top 50. But this record has been the biggest smash hit that this country has ever had. This record, as I understand it, has sold almost 4 million records in less than 60 days. We have to make it our honorary number one hit of 1958. I said honorary because at least it does deserve some kind of recognition. Here's David Seville and the Chipmunks with the Chipmunk song. Oh, 
I hope you agree with me. I think you probably did that that record, in spite of all facts and figures, should have had some kind of mention. So we made it the honorary number one record of 1958. Well, good people, that certainly takes care of it for tonight, December 31st, in the year of our Lord, 1958. I certainly hope you've enjoyed your hits of the year. Don't forget, if you missed all or any part of it, we'll be back again tomorrow afternoon at 5 o'clock with your hits of the year. In the meantime, well, Friday, back to your hits of the week. And, of course, we certainly hope you all have the merriest and the happiest of New Year's. Okay, that's WMGM. Peter Tripp, the curly-headed kid in the third row. He was convicted on payola charges in 1960 and disappeared. Okay, Joe O'Brien and Benny on WMCA. For most of the WMCA area, it's rain today. The temperature is now 43 degrees, humidity 90%. The wind is from the southeast at 30 miles an hour. And if you happen to be going in the wrong direction, driving that wind right into your windshield. Come on along, come on along, stay with WMCA. Come on along, come on along, it's the way to start your day. And if you want to hear the hits and news and sounds of our town, come on along, come on along, stay with WMCA, yeah! When I became age, my mother called me. Yes, indeed, that's the miracle, shop around, and that's what a lot of people will be doing today, no doubt about it. Plenty of shopping going on on these four final shopping days of Christmas. Oh, boy, the stores are so crowded, the pickpockets are working only by appointment. You're driving today? for well, the best mileage anywhere, drive with care and buy Sinclair Power X gasoline. Take a good long look at those roads before you do any driving today. They're treacherous in some parts of the WMCA area and vary from section to section. Once it'll be slippery, then it won't be. So take it easy and drive carefully. 5 Utah Beach, St. Mary's of California, 70 to 64, and Penn State drubbed Syracuse, 77 to 58. Hey, O'Brien! What do you want, Benny? Knock, knock! Who's there? You! You who? You who yourself! Newscast and WMCA, Ed Brown will have a complete roundup of our very mysterious weather this morning. Okay, that's WMCA with Joe O'Brien and Benny. Benny was Joe O'Brien, played at double speed on the tape recorder, very much like the chipmunks. Okay, uh, the next thing, WINS. I've got two DJs back to back here. You've got a Smith named Irv, who was the morning man, Irving Smith. And we're going to hear his show end at 10 o'clock. And we're going to hear the WINS go into the news. Now, this news presentation that they have is a really funny thing when you find out that they were, there's no indication there that they were going to become an all news authority in the city for over 50 years. You never guess it by the way they did the news as a rock and roll station that that was ever going to happen. And we're going to have the Listen to Lacey theme and the Jack Lacey, beginning of the Jack Lacey show. Jack Lacey sounds a lot like Jack Benny, and he has the same dry sense of humor. So this is, it, it's, it's interesting because you probably have never heard this since the day, but it may not be as good as you remember. Oh, one other thing before I do this. Everybody here see the musical or the movie Grease? Yeah. Remember when they did the announcements in the morning in the high school, the chimes? They went doom, doom, doom and all that. What school have you ever heard of did that? None. What were they sending up? Okay, I'm going to play the WIMS air check now. Time, the end. Earl Grant. The wind's time is nine minutes before ten, and while we're talking about the time. Each jukebox play and disc you buy cast the vote we seek. Now listen to the choice you've made. The top song in Windsland this week. Top C, part two. minutes before
before 10 o'clock, that was Topsy Part 2, courtesy called the drummer man of the top tune in Wind's Land. Today, 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 are the shoes that you've got on. Real gone, are the shoes that you've got on. Real gone. Mark Debbie Show, oh, you're in the know, oh, and the price so low. Oh, Well, the man says, variable cloudiness today, some periods of sunshine, but also a chance of brief showers here and there, especially in northern sections. Temperatures rising to the 50s, it's 47, and windy right now, northwest winds at 18 miles an hour. Three minutes before 10 at the Polka Dot Luncheonette near the new Robert Hall showroom at 8th Avenue and 40th Street. You've been listening to Wake Up to Music with the Smith, May, and Irv, suggesting you stick around for more good music with this came from the 1010 spot on your dial. And listen to Lacey, Jack Lacey, coming your way with the good things and music for all you good, good listeners and any of you bad ones who want to tag along. And join us tomorrow somewhere along the way between 6 and 10 a.m., won't you? And wake up to music with a Smith named Irv. Keep your radio on, let's have a big party, W-I-N-S. We can sing and have fun to wonderful music, W-I-N-S. Dial 1010. Win, New York. This is Win, the station you can hear both in AC and DC, New York. Now hear this, now hear this. From the Win's News Center. This news is really happening now. Stockholm. News anytime when it happens. Next complete newscast at 1025. saying, all right, now I know what he's going to do. He's going to come on. He's going to say, good morning, this is Jack Lacey. Then he's going to tell us he'll be here till noon. And then he's going to say he's going to play records. And he'll say, oh, we'll play the hits and the new releases and the up-and-coming records and all the regular. This is what you're thinking, aren't you? I'm not going to say that at all. Not at all. I'm just going to say, here's Malcolm Dodds, and this is real. Wind's time now is four minutes after ten at Juliet's Buggy Service, around the corner from Robert Hall's new store at 8th Avenue and 40th Street. Well, right now, the teddy bears with the number five record in Winsland. To know him is to love him. eight minutes after 10 at the American Belly Tanning Corporation of 4th Avenue and the wind's temperature is 47 degrees. It looks like and cooks like the high-priced bird. Tastes like it too, just try it on bread. Flavored gems that are in blue bonnet make everything better with blue bonnet on it. Now here is a message from the Everly Brothers to tell you all about their problems. Jingles hokey enough for you? Unbelievable. This presentation with rock and roll, like I said, it's, uh, they were playing rock and roll all right, but the presentation was very middle of the road there. And some of those so-called legendary announcers, well, they may not have been quite as funny as good as we remember. You know, it's, it's the way it is. Sadly, W-I-N-S is Irv Smith, the Smith name Irv, was killed in a car crash just a few months after this air check. He was going 105 miles an hour on the Henry Hudson Parkway, and he hit a lamppost without any braking. They literally peeled him out of the car. That happened on January 31st, 1959. On February 3rd, 1959, Buddy Holly, the big bopper, and Richie Valens were killed in it. It was not a good week for rock and roll in New York, you know, having that happen. So much for the rock stations. Here's what the others were doing. WNBC, other called WRCA then, WCBS, when, the, when they played music, 
and WNEW continued to play only pop selections and bragged about not being non-rock and roll like it was a good thing. They'd soon learn otherwise. Only WNEW was successful at this, though. Without all the network intervention, they had a much more varied playlist and a more up-tempo presentation. WNEW had a lot more time to play music as well. The networks were bogged down with way too much news and a lot of useless feature programs. WCBS was the poorest of all at trying to be a music station when they played music. They only played music part of the time. Their personalities and overall sound were great. Jack Sterling's morning show comes to mind. But they could not pick music to save their souls. <laughs> their music remained stodgy and hopelessly dull all the way up to the fall of 1967 when they dropped music for all news. WABC, still mostly pop with mature presentation, but they were not afraid to flirt with rock and roll. First, there was Martin Block's Uncensored Countdown, which we're going to hear soon on Saturday morning. And then a surprising decision to put the father of rock and roll himself, Alan Freed, on the air at night after WINS had fired him. Alan Freed's concert in Boston caused a riot, and the police got involved. Winds canned him like a tuna. He ended up on WABC for a short time. He did not last on WABC since he refused to sign the ABC's anti-payola waiver. <laughs> now, I have... People would have killed him if he didn't do those. He was into gangsters in the city to play records and stuff. Morris Levy had put a studio in his house in Connecticut. Uh, Nate Tarnpool from Brunswick Records had bought his car. If he couldn't play what they told him, they would, they would have killed him. So he could not sign the anti-payola waiver very well. So he had to get out of New York. I have a sample of him on WABC. This is one of the most ridiculous things of all. When you hear the jingles they were playing, he's doing his tap on the phone book routine. And you, these jingles, if you thought the Winslands were bad, wait till you hear the WABCs at the time. I apologize for the quality of this, but air checks of him on ABC are so rare that, you know, you have to take what you can get. 595. We've had one winner tonight already. Mrs. Woody, if you're listening to our show right now, right after our next song, we're going to play a recorded mystery voice, and if you can identify it, you will win the prize listed for number 595. If you know Mrs. Rosella Woody, W-O-O-D-Y of Newburgh, New York, and would like to call her and get in touch with her to make sure she's listening, you get on the phone and call right now. While we hear a knockout of a record by the knockout, Darling Lorraine. Boy, did that record take off like a skyrocket. Request from Newark, New Jersey for that to Stella, Tony, Angie, and all the cats who sport around in Renee's 1960 Impala. Jimmy, thank you for a wonderful letter. Jimmy says she's 19 now, but she still digs rock and roll the most. Dance with me. Here are the drifters. Dance with me. Dance with me. Dance with me. Ah, the great record, boy. The drifters and dance with me. Twenty-five minutes after nine, WABC time, and here's Sammy Turner to sing always. There's that Jordan, the crown prince of rock and roll. Not on the phone. Good looking girls, isn't he? Yeah, he dig them. Huh? EJ. Yeah. I said you were handsome. The girls all agreed with me. Put the glasses back on. I am quick. EJ Ed Jordan was the crown prince of rock and roll at WABC. It was Paul Sherman that wins because when he went on his concerts, Al. Uh, Paul Sherman took over as the crowd. Imagine Ed Jordan from ABC, the network God news guy, being the crowd prince of rock and roll with Alan Freed and those jingles. I mean, the whole thing was absolutely ridiculous. Okay, this is one you remember. I got one here that I'm betting you don't remember. This is something that only the DXers and real radio fans like me picked up on. In the fall of 1959, mostly ethnic WOV on 1280 was bought by Bartell Family Radio Group. They changed the calls to WADO and went top 40. It was called Radio ADO, WADO. The DJs were called the Music Makers, and they had lush jingle themes. They had an interesting sound with slick DJs and a very hip approach, but the DJs were all from out of town and never connected with the New York audience. 
WADO was the first to broadcast teletype sound behind the news. The first to have a wise guy morning man that used drop-in lines from current songs for humor. And they really went all out with the jingles and presentation. The wise guy morning man was named Harry. They call him Happy Hair. And the midday guy was Kenny Garland, your man about town. Afternoons with Johnny Holiday, but not the same guy that was on Winds later on. Every station had a Sandy Beach and a Johnny Holiday. That was a that was a house name. <laughs> okay, I don't have an air check at WADO, but I digitized part of their jingles master. So the jingles and the theme for Happy Hair's morning show, the theme for Kenny Garland's midday man about town, and the jingles that they had. This will give you an idea of what they sounded like in late 1959. Now, hearing those WABC jingles and those winds jingles, this was huge to have a station with this kind of presentation. Unfortunately, it was number it was the fourth one to do it, and it was up at 1280 on the dial. But just listen to these jingles. This is W-A-D-O, Bartell Family Radio, New York. Where there's fun, there's Kenny Garland, and about town. That the music makers found It's Radio A.D.O. A.D.O. on the go For music and sports And weather reports It's A.D.O. at 1280 The new sound's been found On Radio A.D.O. That those jingles compared with the announcers they had at the time and that happy hair funny morning show that was really the first Cracker Jack Top 40 in New York but almost nobody ever heard it it only lasted about a year and a half in that form and at night they had they were committed with contracts from the previous owners to be on and be so they had uh, Jocko's Ro Jocko Henderson's rocket chip show on at night they had Jack Walker your pear-shaped talker who would later be on WLIB he was on on the overnight they also had uh, Alan Fredericks did the, uh, the night train doo-wop show on Saturday nights on there with requests. Those all happened on WADO. Those went on. The night shows and the R&B went on, but the, the rock and roll was dropped very quickly during the day. WADO was a week fourth at best from launch and would soon be blown out of the water once WABC joined the race and five stations were now competing for that same audience. Three of them 50,000 waters. You know, an MCA, 5,000 watts on 570. That's nowhere near the same as 5,000 on 1280. There was no contest here. ADO was... Okay, we move up to ABC. In mid-1960, the ABC network was in financial crisis. A meeting was held in New York, and these were the findings. The TV and radio networks were losing millions. Their O&O &O TV channels were making money. But the radio O&Os were drowning in red ink. All but one, that is. 
WXYZ in Detroit had a double-digit rating share and was making money. What were they diff doing different, the powers to be quickly asked. A guy named Hal Neal had taken over and was playing rock and roll. The suits had heard only bad things about rock and roll and were wary of the image. But they needed money badly. <laughs> so Hal Neal was brought to New York to turn WABC radio around. They wanted immediate action. They were clueless. In June 1960, the pop and adult records were all removed from the control room. And only the 45s Martin Block played on his Saturday night morning countdown were to be played. That happened around the third week of June 1960 when school got out. This result was hilarious. Since the Mitch Miller jingles sang easy listening all through the day, you heard a sample of those. And all the pop standards announcements were left in place. Martin Block, Fred Robbins and the Robbins Nest, Dick Partridge and the Partridge Tree and the like were trying to do rock and roll on a moment's notice, mispronouncing the names of the artists, etc. We're still looking for air checks from this period, but to no avail. It only lasted about five months in this, in this thing. The songs that were big at the time in June 1960 didn't help these old announcers adjust at all. Uh, itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot Bikini. Mr. Custer, Yogi, Alley Oop, Mule Skitter Blues were all no friends to these old WNEW type guys. I mean, can you imagine these Fred Robbins playing Mule Skitter Blues? <laughs> it's just incredible. They were doing it. And then play and then in those jingles there. Now, I don't have an air check from that June, June to December 1960 period. I do have a Martin Block from April of 1960 with the slow jingles and mispronouncing Bobby Rydell's name. <laughs> this one is from FM, and you can even hear needle scratch. This is, this is the beauty. My love. Frankie Avalon, don't throw away all those teardrops. It's the ballroom and Martin Block. And now the screen is struck by lightning. Marlon Brando, Anna Magnani, Joanne Woodward, in Tennessee Williams' The Fugitive Kind. Now playing at the Astor and the Plaza Theater. W-A-B-C, New York. It's 19 minutes past 10 o'clock. I'm reaching for number 21 on the list of best-selling records in the country this week here at Radio 77. Bobby Riddell and Wild One. That jingle no one into this song. That was a riot. <laughs> Wild One by Bobby Riddell is number 20. Right now, hear this. Hey, Tony Curtis, who was that lady? Hey, D. Martin, was it Janet Lee? Who was that lady? A Columbia picture. Funny, funny, funny. Let's go see. Who was that lady? Is now playing at the Criterion Theater at Broadway and 45th Street. Right now, the song that was number 33 last week. It moves up to number 19 this week, and that is a mighty big jump. Neil Sedaka, Stairway to Heaven. Stairway to Heaven leads us right to the weather room. Let's take you out a minute for our latest station identification and weather, and then back to the ballroom in Martin Block. This is WABC, New York's dependable station for news and weather, which brings you its next complete 10-minute report at 10.55. The weatherman says variable cloudiness today, not as warm as yesterday, with a high ranging from the lower 70s well inland to about 60 near the ocean. Tomorrow, Easter Sunday, mostly fair and warm with a high near 80 and a chance of showers late in the day or at night. Right now, the temperature is 63. The time is 10.32 as we return to Martin Block in the Make Believe Ballroom. Ready to continue from the Make Believe Ballroom, reporting the 24 top records in the country to you. This is Martin Block in the Crystal Studio. We have the cash box list of best-selling records here in our hot little hand. And now, number 18 last week, coming on to number 16 this week, Billy Bland, Let the Little Girl Dance. <laughs> Flower on the shelf, standing by 
18 and one half minutes before 11. W-A-B-C, New York. Did you ever dream of owning a glamorous foreign car? Well, then don't miss the Herald Tribune's exciting fact-filled International Automobile Show section on Sunday. And now for number 15, number 20 last week. Moving up, and the Browns have had a success out of every record they've made. Number 15, the old lamplighter. He made the night. Only up that you get that. <laughs> Wherever he would go. Okay. That's what they sounded like, and you can just imagine all those songs being played. It just the Mule Skinner Blues and those jingles and those announcers. Just, it was incredible, but I, we're still looking. We may find an air check yet. Hopefully from FM. Hal Neal solved the incompatibility problem by bringing in consultant Mike Josephs. And by December's end, all the announcers were replaced and the jingles were changed. Cousin Brucey was brought back from Florida. Scott Muni and Herb Oscar Anderson were brought over from WMCA. Soon WABC would become the legend we all remember, knocking off WADO in less than six months, WMGM in just over a year, and finally WINS four years later in the spring of 1965. It would take FM to knock off WMCA, though. That one just wouldn't die. Okay, the last days of winds is a rock station. This is something that I've saved the last. This is a special treat. Uh, we had a guy on winds for about two years, Mad Daddy. Right. <laughs> Uh, if you heard the Wolfman or any of those jocks, chain. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> this guy was unbelievable. In, in, the, in the fall of 1962, Monster Mash was a big hit. Started out with the bubbles in the lab. This guy, Pete Myers from Cleveland, took those bubbles and that mad scientist routine, and he added it to a little bit of the Wolfman style, and he ran with it. Now, this is a studio reel-to-reel -reel dub. This is not coming from AM. And you can actually really hear the bubbles on this. It's nice and crisp. The detail that he went into to put these things together and the speed at which he worked will amaze you if you've never heard him. Uh, at the end of the thing where he's talking about the Beatles song, Money, very, at the last note before that ends and he goes on to the next thing, you actually hear a little ka-ching there. I mean, I, he must have recorded some of this ahead of time. I don't know how he could have possibly done all this at that speed. But you're going to hear the end of Murray the K show. He signs off at 10 o'clock. And from 10 to midnight, Mad Daddy came on. If you've never heard Mad Daddy, uh, prepare to be amazed. Everything is swinging. Everybody's singing. Hey, babe, this is it. I mean, uh, we're sure happy to be back. This is the first uh, show we've done with you in a long time, over a week. Yeah, I think Monday night we left. We got real ill. We couldn't go on kind of the sore throat Monday night. And uh, this is uh, it. So we got through tonight. We still have the... We've got a code in the dough, babe, but we're still going to get, get uh, you know, get by, and we hope that that'll be disappearing by tomorrow. In either case, we want to tell you to stand by for Mad Daddy on yours truly, WINS, the Green Zoop DSW, Group W Station, Westinghouse, broadcasting for New York. Good night, baby. From the little radio station around the corner and up your block, the Mad Daddy Show. <laughs> Moving on, you heard an up-and-comer in one Nana Hummer. That's the wind's premier sound at 80 square record, because we only play round. You just done heard it. Gone, 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 gone. gone, gone. gone. <laughs> Mad Daddy back with you, Friday Chums. You know it is the official show. You can tell by the sound of my drum. Yeah, absolutely, it's definitely me, and the time on the tower is 10.03. Take your daddy's advice now and turn the lights down low. Up coming something nice on the Monday show. It is a sound you can use, a kissy face song, to chase your Monday blues. Ruby and the Romantic, 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 Romantic. Rings in the air. Oh, ain't that an experience there, heavens above. That's a 
snuggle bunny song I thought I'd send along. That's a wins winner. That song 17. That's Ruby and her romantic. That's when you're young and in love. This is Mad Daddy at the six past ten type hour. Ah, here on the tower, turning on the power. power. <laughs> 10-12 here on the Monday scene, rapidly becoming 10-13, bubbling up in our wavy pots, coming your way on 50,000 watts, something that hangs from the ceiling, something that kind of gets you rocking and reeling, something that will have you zipping and zooming in just two minutes, this is pretty woman. Here it comes, I told you weeks ago it was going to score, official wins winning number four, Roy. seven-year-old girl missing only a few hours found in Richmond Hill. Former President Hoover fights on and the president rapes the legislative leaders. These and other stories coming up on the Winds 1030 Report. <laughs> well, now, this is Mad Daddy, the head shrinker's delight, with a cordial invitation for you to write tonight and treat yourself to a lifetime thrill, a picture of your daddy friend, dressed up fit to kill. <laughs> For a glossy photo portrait, right to Bunch Rubber Hall, get your own Mad Daddy photo, that dude laugh and all. <laughs> yeah, if you want a Mad Daddy picture, all you do is scribble into me, right? Mad Daddy friends, 1010 wins, New York, New York, 23. <laughs> The Latin quarter's there, direct from me to you, as you can perceive by the trumpet in the background, friend. My man-eating plants are a digging it, too. Gonna be a hit, definitely understood, imported from England. Herman's Hermit's for you now, I'm into something good, 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 good. This morning, feeling fine, young man, And it's straight forward to the top of the charts, gonna make it, I knew it would. I bubbled it up, it didn't dissolve, I put it on the table, I gave it a revolve. A big win's winner, I'm into something good, good, good. <laughs> Johnny Holiday here. Say, have you known the Murray the K show in WINS recently? Well, surprisingly enough, it's become New York's most Murphy show of the year. You see, each boom, Murray the K pours a fame, and this, combined with his great no and his happy to see, makes him really what's happening. So take it from Johnny Holiday. Tune to 1010 wins for Murray the K. Listen once, and I'm sure you'll flume your Reuben. <laughs> Cook's gonna sing it a cousin of mine. Wasn't that dandy? Wasn't that gear? Let's grab a little dab. It was fast. That was fine. Sam Cook there. I tell you, he wrote the book there. That's a big, big hit. That's a cousin of mine. My, my, my. <laughs> Mad Daddy here keeping things alive on the swing of killer cycles. I mean, 10 10 wins where the time on the tower is 10 25. My, my. Let's give it a spin for the first time on the show. These are the larks right here. This is called the jerk, 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 Show at any rate, honey. That's a record. It's on the label called Money. We think it's going to make it. That's called the Church of the Larks. <laughs> this is Daddy saying Scooby Doo's. I want you to stay tuned attentively because we're going to check the news. Upcoming in two minutes. Look out now. Here it comes. That is G Wiz. After we hear this other new side, do for a ride from Sandy Nelson sitting at his drum. Here it comes. Up and coming jive. This is Teen Beat 65. <laughs> Your jubilation station where it all begins. You found the spot for that. Thanks a lot. Yeah, this is 10 10 win. win, win, win. Yours truly, WINS, the group W station, Western House, Bird Chasing for New York, New York. And this is Mad Daddy, 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 Daddy. Stand by for news. First, fast, and factual. 
from the WINS News Center. A search ends quickly but tragically, and a White House briefing that's highly classified. It's 47 degrees in New York under cloudy skies. This is Stan Bernard with the Winds 1030 report. That's what WINS sounded like. That, that's October of 64. In April of 65, they would go all news. And that would be the longest legend of all. They're still going on today. WCBS also went all news in September 1967. And they're also still going strong. Incidentally, Mad Daddy, his name was Pete Myers. He was on WNEW playing standards as Pete Myers. At the same time, he was Mad Daddy. <laughs> On wins. Uh, he got in the phone booth, you know. <laughs> but uh, what happened is after wins w lost the rock and roll and he lost that gig, he continued on WNEW in the afternoon from 1965 till 1968. On October 4th, 1968, he shot himself in the head with a pistol. The suicide note that they found next to his body said he could not stand WNEW moving him from afternoon to night. Wow. Uh, that's what happened to Mad Daddy. And that's what happened to New York Radio. The rest you know, the ABC, the MCA, all of it you know from here. But this is how it all evolved into what we know. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the networks were very slow in picking up rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, and obviously part of it was they did understand the demographics and what people wanted. And the image. Yeah, but uh, that's what I want the question. They seem to have had a philosophical objection to rock and roll and the people that were involved. Did you, see, did you say something about that? Yeah, it was an image problem. They associated it with the... Preachers called it the devil's music. Yeah. Every time something happened, the, the juvenile delinquent, they blamed it on rock and roll. It was leading to the delinquency. It was a terrible thing. I mean, it, it, youth problems. M music, movies like Blackboard Jungle and stuff didn't help with the switchblades and the gangs. That didn't help either. The image of rock and roll. The, the networks were scared to death of it. Because they had these very straight-laced Madison Avenue ad agencies buying all the time. They were scared to death of rock and roll. But eventually those agencies realized that $10 billion in a year in dollars, you, you can sell the kids easier than you can sell the pot parents. They'll buy anything they hear about, and they've got the money to do it. You know, and The ABC quickly learned that they were the first to learn. One of the problems with the networks competing in any music arena was that news. WABC, when they first went rock, for the first two years. You had the 55 and 25 ABC News. Then on the hour, they did their own five minutes of Action Central News. So you had 10 minutes of news at the top and bottom of every hour. And they sold the full 18 minutes of commercials aloud, especially during the day. So you had four songs per half hour block, if, if you're lucky. And usually the fourth one was faded out. And these were two and three minute records. So uh, what happened is this went on for almost two years. A guy by the name of Rick Scalar had worked at Wins starting off the rock and roll. Incidentally, he wrote the Listen to Lacey theme in those hokey jingles. Rick Scalar wrote those. <laughs> you can blame him for that. But he went over in June of 62 to WABC as like a promotion director. He wasn't a program director yet. But they started to make changes. And 